Hello everyone. Today I'm going to be building a uh, candle holder uh, for a tabletop. It's got a cool curved uh, feature in it uh, that I do with kerf cutting. It's a nice skill builder exercise for uh, bending solid wood. Um, so I'm going to start off here by joining one face of the board uh, on the joiner. No, I apologize for the shaking camera work in this video. Uh, it was kind of an experimentation with a GoPro. Um, after I've joined that one face, we'll head over to the planer and we'll run the board through there to plane the other face of the board parallel to that uh, face that we just jointed. So if you're not familiar, you basically joint one edge or one face and then flip it over and run it through the planer to plane the other face of the board. Now we'll head over the table saw and rip it to width. I think the final board I ended up using here was about four and a half inches by uh, 24 inches long. And uh, I'm going to go ahead and uh, sand everything uh, right now just while it's a nice flat board and easy to work with. Okay, and now we've got to. Uh, finish the edges of the board. Um, I prefer to do that with a plane just because it's so fast. And uh, anytime you get a chance to work with a uh, hand plane, it's just an enjoyable experience. Just showing the ribbon there, showing off. And we'll plane the other edge. That Lee Nielsen plane is a joy to use. And uh, I always hand sand everything down to 220. Um, just hitting it with a block sander here. Um, doing it with a orbital sander uh, is fine, but I always find that uh, hitting it by hand with uh, sandpaper kind of takes it to that next level. So I'm going to be cutting a series of curves in this board. So to prevent tear out and also to um, keep the glue from adhering to the surface after we glue it, I like to use this uh, Gorilla packing tape and make sure and curve that around the edges um, and that's going to that's gonna save us a lot, of, a lot of time and energy. So I'm going to use my track saw to make all the curve cuts and I'll set up my track saw so it doesn't go all the way through the board. <clears throat> I'm leaving about a sixteenth of an inch uh, of wood uh, at the bottom of the curve so I'm not cutting all the way through and I'll slide my stop there to the end of the Board and I've got a quarter inch drill bit there that's going to be used for my spacing. So I'll make a cut, flip the board, make another cut. I'm working off the center, so if I just keep flipping the board and cutting, um, I can make my series of curves uh, very consistently. And what I do is I, I release the stop, move it over, push it up against that drill bit uh, in between the uh, end of the board and the stop, and then um, move that stop over. So I'm consistently moving that stop one quarter of an inch uh, each time. And that sets my spacing. And I can do one more cut here to make it curve all the way. There we go. And show it off. And there's our series of curves. You'll see how uh, I just didn't quite go all the way to the bottom of the board. So here I'm doing a, a layout for the um, candle holder holes. And uh, I make an all punch right there, but that doesn't actually end up being where I want it. So I don't like that, so let's rearrange them here. There we go, so I've got a layout there that I like. We'll uh, go, ahead and, go ahead and make our, our marks. Just use an awl to give our, our drill uh, spot to start into. I'm uh, taping a, a little thin piece to the back. And this is just a backer board to prevent tear out from the uh, hole saw we're going to use to drill those holes. Go over to my miniature drill press. It had uh, a heck of a time with that big hole saw. That was more than I wanted. And we're uh, taking off our backer board. And there we've got our three holes for our candle holders to sit down in. 
and just uh, ease the edges of those holes with some, uh, some sandpaper, some 120 grit sandpaper. And now we're going to add glue to the curves. I'm uh, purposely not going all the way to the end. I don't want that glue to squeeze out the end. Uh, show, show you what we're working with here. So I've got it uh, glued up and just got a clamp on the end holding it all uh, together. And that'll be, that'll be enough for it to dry overnight. So here we are the next day. I'm re removing the tape. This is the first time I'm removing the tape. I left it on there um, to, uh, if any glue were to squeeze out through those crevices, then the tape will catch it. And uh, here we're uh, mixing the epoxy. I'm going to pour epoxy down into those kerf cuts. It's the first time I've ever tried this before. Um, and uh, just kind of see how it goes, you know, see what it looks like in the end. So mix that up. And I've got this little, uh, this, this little bottle here. It's got a little squeeze tip. So I'm going to pour my epoxy down into that bottle and then use the little tip um, to squirt epoxy down into those uh, crevices. And this was extremely tedious. I drastically underestimated how long this was going to take. It seemed like it went on forever. And I actually had to come back about three times and refill um, the holes because that epoxy would, would seep down and then it would um, dry and then it would seep down and it would dry and it just uh, it took forever. Don't think I'll wind up trying to fill these with epoxy again. So uh, <clears throat> here we are the next day taking off the tape off the bottom that was preventing the epoxy from running out the bottom. I'm going to give that a quick clean up where the epoxy came out a little bit. And now uh, I'm going to uh, rip the edges uh, to clean them up. Just make one rip, flip it, hit the other side, move the fence over, get the other side. And I just kind of did this until I liked the way the epoxy looked. Um, there were some voids in it. So I just kept moving in until I gotten rid of most of the voids without losing too much of the grit. Now we just uh, sand it all up here. And uh, there we are with the hand sandpaper at 220. Just give it a just give it a really nice surface to put the finish on. And here I've got a uh, drum sander chucked up on my drill to clean up that inside radius. It's about the best you can do. And then after I kind of did it roughly with that, um, hand sandpaper behind that to, to really clean it the rest of the way up. And uh, just kind of fairing that outside curve. And uh, cut it all flush at the end. Make sure and uh, sand those ends that just uh, just cut. And here I'm just uh, <clears throat> driving some screws into some pine. This is just going to act as a piece to hold hold the the piece up off the table so I can apply the finish. So we'll, uh, we'll hit it with the first coat here. And, uh, my camera actually died on me, so this is all you're going to get to see of the first coat. And uh, the next day, come back with a 220 sandpaper and uh, hit, that, hit that surface that we finished the day before. You always want to sand between coats. I recommend 220. Um, some people use 320. I think that's a little excessive. Get that all cleaned off real nice. Get ready for our second coat. And here we'll put the second coat on, and this is where you really start to get a nice finish. 
you could do three coats. You know, some people even do four. Um, I think for a piece like this, it's not going to get a whole lot of wear and tear. Two coats is uh, more than sufficient. I'm using a satin polyurethane. And that's it. That's the finished piece. Hope you enjoyed. Uh, be sure to like and subscribe. Thanks for watching.